Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this beautiful Thursday night, March 30th, 2023. It's about 1021 p.m. out here along the West Coast in California. And take a look at the last 24 hours or so of earthquake activity on the globe. Well, shows a pretty broad area of movement across the Pacific Plate, getting some deeper activity down into the Fiji area. Some adjustment going on uh, deeper areas of New Zealand. We'll get to that here in a second. The latest quake, though, a 2.6 on the big island of Hawaii. All right, starting off here into the Pacific Northwest, we are seeing uh, a little bit of uptick in movement across the Cascadia subduction zone. Notice these a uh, couple of earthquakes here at the southern end of the Cascadia and literally just off the coast of Oregon into the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, there's a couple different uh, um, fault system names here. There's a Cascadia Fold and Thrust Belt, a couple other faults that they've renamed, but this is basically the Cascadia out here. And we did see a handful of earthquakes here today, uh, including a 3.3, 17 kilometers deep, into the Cascadia subduction zone underneath this area. Uh, the latest one here off the coast of Brookings, Oregon. Beautiful city, absolutely beautiful or a beautiful town it's really not even a city i can't i can't consider brookings a city um but it does sit in a goodness does it sit in a hazard zone out here but uh you know i think the folks up there have been uh told of what can happen only have a certain amount of time should a 9.0 pop up here uh with the subsequent tsunami definitely got to make sure folks are prepared uh, for evacuation due to the uh, large tsunami that's expected along the west coast. Either way, a little bit of activity here off the coast of Brookings, 2.5, 20 kilometers deep here into the Cascadia subduction zone, which begins just offshore here. This is the area, which, by the way, extends Northern California northward um, up to about the Queen Charlotte Sound area. Uh, that's capable of producing a 9.0, at least. Last 9-pointer was back in 1700 so 323 years of built-up strain uh, is um, accumulating here for the next big one just a matter of time also there's a southern segment here that does rupture mainly around this area um, that sees partial ruptures on occasion as well uh, the last one was prior to the 1700 9.0 full rupture uh, but this area can see probably about an eight pointer or so mid eight uh, which would probably be big enough to create a tsunami out here, but not quite as big if we were to see an entire rupture uh, for the uh, entire Cascadia subduction zone. But uh, yeah, a little bit of activity ramping up. So on that note, I have a feeling this is what's causing it here. Let me go to the make sure we got the most recent trimmer map here, which we do. Uh, the trimmer map shows us with 20 epicenters right around the area that we're seeing that earthquake activity up north here into the Oregon area. I'm not for sure. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything showing up here on the uh, uh, trimmer map here in Northern Cal. Mostly around the Oregon area due east of the Brookings region. So we got this area right here. Uh, trimmer is occurring right around underneath this area, north uh, under Cave Junction area probably. Uh, 35 to 45 kilometers deep much deeper than these quakes but remember the trimmer is a slow slip event type of uh i don't want to call it an earthquake because it's really not but if you want to call it a slow earthquake yeah okay so that pressure subduction here is adding further strain upstream and that's why we're seeing some of these earthquakes a little bit more shallower uh, remember trimmer activity does ultimately apply the stress and the tightening that's needed uh, to produce to produce a strain out here along the Cascadia, and that's what we're seeing here tonight. Uh, over well throughout the last 24 hours, tremor to the east, built up pressure, a little bit further upstream. So we'll continue to watch this. It's not too often that the Cascadia sees a four or five, and then a big one. Uh, this specific subduction zone just kind of goes. You know, it doesn't really have any telltale signs of an impending earthquake. Uh, although I think the trimmer plays a major part in it, uh, you know, that's kind of why I cover the trimmer activity because it's kind of a big deal. Um, 
you know, we can hopefully utilize this information to possibly forecast the next uh, mega quake out here along the uh, Cascadia. So I want to go back and bring up the last year of trimmer, which is going to be an outrageous number, uh, not including this year. So I want to see what 2022 was. Hopefully my computer doesn't just go kaboom. But yeah, it looks like it handled that pretty nicely. So we got 53,000 epicenters of trimmer. Most daily trimmer uh, can run in the couple hundreds. The elevated trimmer events run into close to a thousand or more uh, in any given day. But the intervals here vary. Uh, in the past couple years, they've been varying from, uh, I don't know, it seems like every five, six months or so. Normally it was around every 14 months. So the, the intervals of trimmer, elevated trimmer, has been getting much closer, although we haven't seen too much this year. This is, uh, you know, this kind of gives you a good impression of where the strain is building up here uh, across the Cascadia, and that's the entire length of the Cascadia subduction zone. So looking at um, the data just from this year, very minimal. Let me show you guys here real quick. 8,844 epicenters of trimmer, which is not a lot. If you look at these uh, marks up here, we haven't really had any major uptick in trimmer. It's all just been kind of mellow. So not for sure what's going on with it. Um, maybe it's to the point of, I'd hate to say it, maybe to the breaking point. I don't know. You know, the further you push this plate down underneath the Juan de Fuca plate underneath the North American plate, Seems like the more activity um, that we see coming upstream for as little earthquakes. So we'll continue to watch that uh, and see how it plays out. Notice the trimmer, major decline. Regular intervals have been occurring, it seems like, uh, you know, a couple times a year. Our last one was back in, um, looks like October, oops, October. I don't want to cover that uh, October or so of last year. And um, so, yeah, look at this gap right here. There's just not a whole lot going on right now so far this year. Uh, up at, Actually, if you include a good majority of November and December, there really wasn't that much. So we should be seeing a large uptick here in trimmer. Um, if not, then something's going on need to be on guard but either way we should always be on guard out here uh you know we're so used to our daily lives and you know coming home from work and just popping on the tv if you do that I'm more of an outdoor man uh, outdoorsman so i go outside and just kind of do some yard work and enjoy the uh outside scenery not much of a tv guy but uh you know we're so complacent with life right now everything's just automated online um, you know, we, we got to remember Mother Nature out here is, um, can put our lives in check real quick. So just make sure you guys have an earthquake plan uh, out here along the West Coast, Northern California, northward. And when that 9.0 does pop off, it will produce a significant tsunami Pacific wide. Pacific wide. Uh, Japan seen it back in 1700. There's uh, the chat. Uh, the documents there that the, um, um, I can't think of the word for it right now, but there's records from uh, back in that time, 1700, of the uh, orphan tsunami. But there's also been studies here uh, to prove that orphan tsunami originated here from the uh, Cascadia. All right, moving on, folks. Um, not a whole lot going on through Washington right now. Aside from the movement up in the Cascadia, we've got general activity here across the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Bay Area, not seeing a whole lot of movement. A couple of smaller quakes. Southern California area, looks a little spotty here tonight. Not seeing too much activity. Uh, outside of Chino, a couple of smaller quakes. Aside from that, uh, looks like about an average day down there in Southern California. Yellowstone National Park, wow, USGS only managed to throw up <laughs> four earthquakes. And um, let me go back here to the seven days map here. See how many they included. Yeah, they looks like they went back 
and added quite a few of those smaller quakes that we were chatting about last night. Uh, they threw up about 105 earthquakes. Remember, I told you to add about 60 or so more because they were only showing about uh, they were only showing about 60. So this is a little bit below what I thought. Uh, either way, they went back and added a few more quakes there. The largest 3.7 uh, looks like a 3.1 in there as well, uh, and many other twos, and of course, a lot of small microquake in there. So they're showing just uh, well only four earthquakes today, Yellowstone. So let's let's go verify it, right? I want to make sure my government's uh, doing the proper job out here. That's what the USGS is paid for, right? To make sure that we get notified on what's going on. This is our equipment. Uh, stand by here for a second, Yellowstone. Is it going to work? If not, I will go to the University of Utah and double check uh, the public information here. Been having a little bit of issue, it seems, with the... Um, it's called isthisthingon.org. Make sure we still live. Hopefully we are. Yes, we are. We're running strong. Apparently that site isn't, though. So let's back out of there. It looks like... Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, never mind. It looks like it decided to finally work. Uh, a little slow on their network. I don't know who runs this or not. I can't remember the person's name, but something's going on with their site. Okay, so looking at the data here, the Yellowstone data... This is a graph, the overview of Yellowstone National Park and the location of the epicenter is around the borehole area. This is about the only closest station I can find. And USGS shows four earthquakes here on the map. Four. Okay, hold on. Let's go back here and double check this, right? Four earthquakes in the last 24 hours compared to this map right here. What do you guys see? I see a lot more than four. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they got a little bit overwhelmed with the previous day's earthquake activity, but uh, they got their work cut out for them tomorrow. Um, lucky for them, tomorrow's Friday, and then the weekend's off, right? No reporting of earthquakes for Yellowstone on the weekends. Why? I don't know. Just not that important, I guess. Either way, looking at the graph here, uh, you can probably take the four and multiply it uh, by... Eh, maybe 10. I think so. There's probably at least 40 earthquakes on here. Um, this is the largest one that uh, I believe was showing up here. That is a 2.5 at the time stamp of, what is that, 1309? That's my time, 1309, um, which is going to be, what's the UTC time? Hold on a second here. UTC time is going to be 2009. 20. See the 20? Uh, yeah, probably 2009 right here. So that's going to be that two pointer. Followed up by quite a few more aftershocks there. And as you can see, many, many, many others here um, that are showing up across the Yellowstone Park. So the earthquake swarm is still continuing. USGS has a method in reporting their data. It takes a lot of time. I get it. To pinpoint the exact location, the depth, correct magnitude. I don't know if it's one person or multiple people working on that when it comes to reporting the data. Um, but you know, that's why I that's why I always go I always go to the source, folks. I always check the the raw data, so to speak. That's the uh, this is the true factual data. You can't make this up. This is what the instruments are recording. So earthquake swarm, ongoing and continuing their Yellowstone National Park. All right, uh, rest of the country for now, according to the USGS, looks fairly quiet. A little bit of swarming outside of the OKC area. Got about four earthquakes listed up here on the map near Bridge Creek, Oklahoma. And there's a lot of roads out here. What are they leading to? That's a good question. Let's see what's on the satellite map. Well, I can already see some of it. <clears throat> Looks like some little bitty towns and communities out here, I think. And there is, um, backing out on the map here, there is some checkered boxes such as this. Uh, these do look like some oil pumping operations. There's some tanks here in the shadows, four or five tanks. 
Uh, and also, I'm sure some wastewater disposal wells out here. Uh, and they're scattered about the, um, the landscape. The vegetation kind of makes it hard to see there on the satellite imagery. But Oklahoma is uh, filled with oil fields all over the place. We know that. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, Hawaii. Lighting up here in the last hour, it looks like. Goodness, Kilauea Volcano popping. Not literally, but uh, with a little bit of earthquake activity. Quite a few ones and some twos out there. Let's go ahead and check the latest notification system here from the Hazard uh, USGS Hazard Notification System in regards to the HVO. The daily Kilauea Volcano update. Kilauea is not erupting. Uh, it's been paused since about March 7th. Lava is no longer flowing on the uh, the crater flow uh, floor. The crater flow. Um, no significant changes have been observed. So this was uh, earlier this evening. Uh, no unusual activity at the rift zones currently, but this earthquake activity looks like it's kind of popped up out of the blue. We'll continue to watch that and see how that plays out. Uh, movement around the Pahala area as well. Not elevated, just a little bit so, more so in the last hour, it looks like. <clears throat> All right, uh, Alaska getting a clutter of earthquakes up here around the Trident Volcano in the uh, Mount Martin area, it looks like, all spread out. Movement throughout the Cook Inlet area up around the Anchorage area as well. Not really seeing too much activity across the Aleutian Trench for now. Uh, we did see a 4.3 earlier this morning, 38 kilometers deep there into the Aleutian Trench. The Curl Kamachaka Trench. One of these days, we're going to be chatting about that because that, this one's built up. Definitely got a lot, a lot of strain built up here along this subduction zone area. But for now, 4.5 earlier, uh, earlier this evening, it looks like. 35 kilometers deep. One earthquake here off the coast of Japan. That was a deep one there. Um, early this morning, it looks like. Let's see what we got here across the Earthquake 3D globe for this area. Uh, goodness, was that right? Look what's going on here, folks. It, you know, most of the time we got a swarm of activity across this area. So things have come to a halt, it looks like, here across the western uh, Philippine plate. Uh, still seeing a little bit of crunching and adjustment here across the area of the uh, Mal uh, Maluka Sea region and Banda Sea area, it looks like south of the philippine trench look at the warping uh, out there along the plate tectonics this area is just kind of being pushed and pulled and you know you, you can see it even without all these lines here the plate boundaries you can see how this whole area is being warped and pulled and um, spread apart due to plate dynamics um, nothing showing up there across the usgs map but there is a 4.0 it looks like a 3.2 as well newer earthquake activity but this is awfully quiet for this area. Um, so we'll watch that. Um, quietness doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. Down into the Fiji area, pair of fours. Awfully deep, it looks like. Um, way down there, well below 500 kilometers deep. 4.4 looks to be the magic number uh, into the Tonga Trench. We do have some activity here across New Zealand. Looks like uh, a 3.3 coming in, fairly deep. Let's see what's going on here across the um, New Zealand area. 2.6. Um, are they reporting it? Let's check the all magnitudes here real quick. 2.0, 3.3, there we go. So this is a rather deep earthquake into the... Uh, uh, I believe the Hikarangi subduction zone, 231 kilometers deep there. That's uh, definitely a deep one. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, that was about an hour or so ago. Um, let's see what we got here for the earthquake drums. We picked it up across some of these seismographs, it looks like. Uh, I don't know if that's a three-pointer, though. It doesn't... An hour or so ago, that would be way... Let's see here. Stand by here for just a second. Looks like there's some other earthquake activity here. 
uh, a couple hours or so ago. It looks like mainly around North Island. So let me go back here and see what's going on. Go over here to the all magnitudes. There's a three pointer. A couple twos popping off here. I'm looking for any uh, sizable earthquake activity over the past few hours. Some twos kicking up here, mainly around North Island. A um, couple ones as well. Let's see what we got 14 hours ago. I'm just kind of figuring out what this other activity we're seeing here across the map is. I uh, got to see the earthquake drums to, to pick it up. But I'm kind of chatting about these earthquakes that are showing up um, across a good portion of North Island seismograph stations there. Uh, let me check the uh, volcano drums real quick and see what we have. About the same thing. No major swarms at the volcanoes currently. But uh, definitely a little bit of elevated activity earlier and of course a deeper movement quake there uh, in the last hour or so into the uh, deeper regions of the Hikarangi subduction zone. That's another major player in producing a damaging earthquake one of these days. All right, uh, let's move to the west. One earthquake, eastern Afghanistan. This has been pretty heightened out here recently. Um, 103 kilometers deep into the mountains. Not a whole lot of activity across Turkey, but don't let that uh, fool you. A lot of microquake activity still continuing in that region there of Turkey with a couple twos and some threes. Elevated earthquake activity across the area today, it looks like. Uh, did have a 4.5 here in the Mediterranean Sea. In the Greece area, 10 kilometers deep. Uh, Austria did see a 4.0. That's a rather odd earthquake up there. Uh, but they do get some on occasion, a couple different subduction zones that sit around here. Uh, let's see what else is on the map here across the area. Nothing going on in the Atlantic. I find that really odd. Um, normally we'll see a little bit of movement out here in these divergent boundaries, but not a zip zero. Uh, Chile area, South America region, of course, at 6.3 coming in to the uh, Chile area earlier this morning, just um, southwest of Santiago. This is the area that's seen that uh, very large earthquake back in the 60s. Looks like a little bit of strain starting to build back up there. That was uh, followed by a couple smaller earthquakes, uh, aftershocks, I should say, uh, at least four, or at least three four pointers. I'm sure there's many more, but uh, the USGS only reporting a handful uh, due to the threshold there. But EMSC model showing some other elevated movement in the 2 and 3 range within that area. Middle America Trench showing some elevated activity as well. That's going to be, uh, man, goodness, that's a deep earthquake. Let me see where that's at. Well away from the plate boundary and well inland. 4.6 into the Mexico area, but... Remember, this is way down there. The plate boundary, right? This plate, the uh, uh, Cocos plate here, being shoved here in the Middle America Trench underneath the North American plate here in this area. Uh, getting some deeper movement quakes down there. Not seeing too much activity further upstream, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, deeper earthquake movement here in this area does tend to lead to some larger activity. Watch that area pretty closely. Puerto Rico Trench, um, not a whole lot. Look at this, goodness. Only got uh, three earthquakes. Are we on the right map? Yes, we are. All magnitudes. Not a whole lot going on here um, at all in the Puerto Rico area. One earthquake here from this morning. It looks like Colombia, 4.5, way early this morning. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. Anything new popping back up? Yeah, we'll keep checking on that. Kilauea volcano still showing a little bit of activity there with the uh, the earthquakes popping off. All right, space weather activity. There we go. Getting that blackout once again. The data being blacked out. Um, sunspots. Goodbye. Saying goodbye to this area down here that produced the X flare, seventh X flare of this of this uh, this year. It looks like these sunspots over here on the northwestern limb of the sun are starting to uh, misbehave a little bit, starting to amplify, get a little bit more uh, unstable. It's been it's been relatively common 
to see all these sunspots, um, you know, kind of advance and get unstable when they're on kind of like the far side of the sun. And then as soon as they rotate into the Earth view, they all behave. It's that observer effect, right? I think you guys know what I'm talking about. When things uh, are being observed, they act a certain way. And that's kind of what's going on here with the sunspot. So maybe, maybe I'll just stop covering the sunspot activity and see what happens. Because all of these look fairly uh, minimal for the most part. There is a new regional sunspot, looks like, down on the southeastern limb. But that's about it. Goodness. Not a whole lot of potential here across this uh, current disk that's facing the Earth. Uh, right now, these are still somewhat elevated because of uh, 3256, which is now way over on the southwestern limb of the sun. So these are a little bit elevated. Uh, should be a lot lower than that. But 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, 10% for X flare. The, you can probably cut these down to Z, uh, at least 1% X flare. M flare is probably at least 5 C flare maybe if we're lucky uh, in the 50% range uh, from my observations there of the uh, magnetic structure in those sunspots. A little bit of elevated activity here across the um, higher polar regions. And I believe that's got to do, it's kind of funny because they really didn't mention anything here across the three day. Uh, that was due to a coronal hole 86 that was in position here a few days ago. Remember that? Well, that solar wind has reached the earth tonight, it looks like. And they're, they're predicting or forecasting here, <coughs> excuse me, a G1 class storm, four to five on the KP index here. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of slight elevated conditions here across the regions of Canada working its way into uh, Alaska, northern Alaska. So heads up if you guys are up there or if you're down in Antarctica somewhere, take a look up to the sky if you have clear skies. I don't know how many people are watching this uh, show down in Antarctica. Who knows? <coughs> but all right, let's see what else we have here. And then we'll move on. Um, I think that's about it for space weather. We do have... Let me show you guys here real quick. <coughs> Pick up a cough all of a sudden. All right. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a big weather event day going on here across a good portion of the Midwest area. We're talking about areas down around Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, included in this moderate risk. All the way up to uh, portions of Iowa. Arkansas in there as well, potentially. So these areas here in the red moderate category are basically the most intense areas that could see uh, the highest probability of severe weather. And there's a pretty good risk of tornadoes tomorrow into these areas. 15% chance across those mentioned areas of Memphis, uh, but also Little Rock is included in some of that area as well. 10% chance. Stand by. All right, there we go. Um, so heads up, if you guys are out there, you know, um, stay weather aware because this is kind of a big deal. It's getting that time of year. This is a wide area. We're talking a good distance here of uh, population. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to be in this area of the red or the yellow, uh, but that kind of gives the uh, indicator, the weather models uh, anyway, of where the most intense weather could form. Wind events going to be a big deal up in the portions of Iowa, Cedar Rapid, Cedar Rapids, excuse me, Iowa City, um, Illinois in there as well. 45% chance of seeing some, uh, some damaging wind gusts. Of course, again, with any thunderstorm or, you know, squall line, it does um, take place. Hail is a big threat up there into the Cedar Rapids area as well. Looks as though most of the general um, stronger potential is centered up here around this low that's going to be up around the Iowa area. So uh, just a heads up, folks. Kind of a big deal. I'll check out the um, weather model here for this area. We're going to go to the... Well... We'll go to the NAM 12KM model. There's that low pressure system up here that's going to bring that uh, 
that weather tomorrow and there's the start of it looks like here um taking place in the i believe this what was this afternoon time frame let me look here double check and see what we got um severe storms expected friday <coughs> It looks like possibly uh, begin initiation early to mid afternoon tomorrow, so that's a, a very important time frame to pay attention to. Here's the start of it. Uh, notice some of these storms starting to pop up here uh, as that low pressure system pulls in some warmer Gulf moisture, and there's that line of potential severe weather. Again, this is all, you know just one weather model there's many of them that could take place here uh, but just because it's not really shown up so strong here there's still a couple supercells down there that's very capable of producing some uh, some sizable events here's a little bit better closer view it looks like So just a heads up, folks, and there's some colder air looks like coming behind that. Uh, for the folks wandering out here along the West Coast, we're actually entering into a, uh, well, a little dry spell. Let me show you guys here for the uh, West Coast area. Uh, yeah, West Coast, Southwest, that'll work. Um, Pacific Northwest is going to stay relatively wet, but most of the systems here will be up north here, north of California. Uh, looks as though possibly on Sunday into Monday is a colder storm system dropping out of the north, but much drier. Um, so things staying unstable for the most part. Um, for the four, whoa, look at that! Just came up out of the south. That's a little unusual there to see that type of moisture coming up straight out of the south. Uh, let's see where that's coming from. Kind of curious about that. Western U.S. Obviously, I know it's coming from the south, but. Um, Let's see what's going on here. It's a little odd to see monsoonal moisture coming up already, but uh, could be an interesting deal. Look at that widespread precipitation maker here for April. For April, that's a little odd for the desert southwest, but hey, I guess that's kind of good news. And then that gets squashed down really quickly. Look at this, boom. Uh, rather odd. Could be a rather interesting year for weather, folks. It's been active far as moisture goes out here along the West Coast, so uh, this severe weather season could be a one for the record books. Definitely you want to be weather uh, weather aware out here. Make, so, make sure you, you get yourself a uh, weather alert weather radio, NOAA radio. Uh, it will send off notifications when there's like a severe storm. But the good thing is most of these cell phones here today will, as long as you turn on your alerts, uh, we'll notify you if there's a tornado warning nearby, if you're in a tornado warning, uh, where it's located at. So I advise not to ignore any, uh, any warnings out here. Kind of a big deal. Definitely unnecessary um, to ignore stuff like that. Alrighty. I'm trying to think what else is there. Anything going on up in Canada? Uh, northern end looks like of the Cascadia. Yeah, a little bit of activity. Look, look at that swarm right there. See, sometimes it's good to check uh, check other agencies. I haven't checked Canada in a little while, but this is right in the middle of the. Um, let's see where we're at. That's kind of like the Explorer plate, right in the middle, away from the plate boundary here. The Cascadia sits right here. Um, this is off the coast of uh, the uh, Canada region, the Queen Charlotte Sound. So it looks like there's definitely some strain going on up here back prior to the Cascadia subduction zone. It's a pretty intense swarm. Any type of swarm out there in the uh, in these plates that get shoved underneath the area to the east is kind of a big deal. So rest of Canada looks like some typical movement out here across the area we did have an Atlantic Ocean earthquake 4.2 uh, 
And off the coast of no, Nova Scotia area, it looks like. Uh, when was that? 329 yesterday? Oh, man. I don't remember anybody reporting that earthquake out there. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to jump off here. Uh, 2.8. Looks like things may be picking back up here around the Indonesia area. We'll continue to watch this area overnight uh, with, with it going quiet. All of a sudden, can't be a good thing. Have yourself a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow, unless something major happens, or maybe I'm woken up by a huge earthquake. You never know. Being out here in Northern California, it's just a matter of time. Just got to be prepared, right? Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime. Take care.